Good afternoon. Welcome, everybody, to the Public Works and Sustainability Committee meeting. Today is June 20th, and we have uh, myself and Councilman Baker present, and uh, Councilman Bullock uh, had noted he's on the way, and we also have uh, Councilman Marks. Thank you for joining us, uh, as well as the administration, maybe even some new faces. So welcome, everybody, um, and we're excited to uh, dig into this today. So uh, calling to order the meeting, the, the, the first order of business on the agenda is approval of the minutes from the last meeting. So if there's no objection, those will go ahead and stand approved. Hearing no objection, those are approved and to be entered into the record. So, you know, we'll just kick this off because we have, I think, 45 minutes today. I don't think we have a, do we have a full hour, 45 minutes. We don't have a heck of a lot of time, but I want to make sure you, um, uh, the administration has uh, every opportunity to present uh, on this agreement. So, uh, and I also want to uh, welcome the members of Lakewood Community Guys. Thank you for being here uh, and looking forward to hearing more from you tonight. So, um, go ahead, take it away, Mr. Leininger or, or, or Mayor George. Uh, I'll start, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Jeff Crossman joined our uh, law department some time ago and has been a valuable asset. He brings a lot of experience uh, on the development side of the business, great experience uh, with development agreements and related agreements. As a result of his experience, we've entrusted him to work with um, uh, LCI on this agreement, and Mr. Crossman has um, uh, drafted and uh, negotiated certain provisions with LCI. He's very familiar with it, uh, and so we're going to have Mr. Crossman address uh, ag address the committee and answer any questions you have. So thank you. Um, hello to council. Um, so I'm pleased to report that we uh, the, the agreement that you've been provided this afternoon uh, should be very, very close to the final form of the agreement. We agreed on all the material terms uh, earlier this week. Um, we worked even a little bit over the weekend to try to make sure we got it to council timely. Um, the, the agreement is a departure of the relationship that had existed pr uh, previous where it was a lease situation. Right uh, in this version of the agreement, uh, the city will be the operator and LCI will be uh, the day-to-day -day operator on behalf of the city. Uh, the city will pay expenses for the operator and um, uh, will guarantee a fixed rate uh, a fee for the service that they'll be providing. We think this arrangement will inure to the benefit of the city for a number of different reasons. There's incentive for LCI to perform at a high level. Uh, there's also uh, incentive to uh, uh, perform uh, in a way that's uh, cost effective for the city. So uh, we think that this is a rather innovative type arrangement uh, that not many cities are doing, um, and we think that this uh, will meet the purpose of what council, I think, and the administration had hoped for, which is to, to expand the opportunities for the community to use the facility and to use, utilize this asset uh, for the benefit of the community. Great. Thank you. All right, at this point, do we have any opening comments from members of the committee or council on this? Mr. Baker. Thank you, and, and thank you, Mr. Crossman. Um, and I spoke with Director Vargo uh, last week and, you know, kind of went through, you know, I understand and appreciate the amount of work the law department and the planning department has put into this. Um, I know, you know, once the notice to terminate the other lease happened, it kind of triggered the 90 days that kind of got things moving. So um, I've been on your side of the table, and I know uh, the, the, the work it takes to kind of get the RFP together and then um, negotiate with, you know, score and then negotiate with who you think is the best. Uh, I will say f fr from a high level, I mean, I tried my best to review this. I know June 30 is our deadline. I'm interested, you know, when the rest of my colleagues get here, if, you know, we could do a special meeting next week. I just, I usually don't like to approve something the night I see it, um, but also interested in the administration's thoughts on that. Uh, but, but from a high level, I'd like to understand, you talk about, you know, the the operator's incentive to perform well. Um, could you kind of explain that more and, and walk through, you know, the specific areas that you think it incentivizes the operator to perform, perform well for the city? Sure. So um, all the costs are covered by the city in this agreement, um, and there's a fixed fee for the operator to uh, the, the operator will receive. In addition to that, there's incentive to um, generate revenue for the facility in the form of 
um, uh, sponsorships and advertisement at the facility w in which the, uh, the uh, LCI will get a, um, a, a portion of the proceeds generated from that. So there is some incentive built into the agreement. Please. Uh, so, so the incentives are mo mostly, I think it's a section on like sponsorships and naming and, and that stuff. Be paragraph 11. Yeah. Um, and then the rest is, it's just incumbent upon them. Uh, it sounds like we will kind of review rates and, you know, rental fees and, and, and those types of things. Um, and, and so I can understand theoretically from a high level as funds come in to um, LCI or, you know, St. Ed's books their season for practices and for games, so does Lakewood, so does whomever else. Um, that money goes into, is it like an escrow account or just a separated account? I'm trying to under, like, could, you, could you go through the mechanics of, from a just layman's perspective of how the revenues come in, how the expenditures get paid? I don't see a provision in here for property taxes. I assume that means it falls on the city, but we might want to put a line in there about that. Um, so any kind of further expansion of that would be super helpful to understand. Sure. So I'll, I'll, talk, I'll tackle the property tax issue first. Um, presuming, uh, presuming that the city has to pay property tax, that would be a city cost um, built into the operating uh, uh, budget of the, of, of the facility. There will be an application, um, I believe, starting next year for a property tax exemption. And we've crafted this agreement with that in mind, uh, meaning that under the old arrangement where we leased out the facility, there's plenty of case law out there that says that's not something that we can receive the top property tax exemption. We believe that there is a good argument to be made uh, with this arrangement that that property tax exemption uh, uh, can be su supported uh, in, in a couple of different ways. Uh, and we reviewed the statutes, the pertinent statutes and the case law relative to that. So. Uh, so we think we didn't specifically mention in the agreement because we think we're going to apply for the ex exemption and, and hopefully receive that exemption beginning next year. Um, with respect to the accounting of revenue and other expenses, paragraph 8 of the agreement covers that. Um, uh, paragraph 8A talks about the budgeting and how that process works. Uh, there will be invoices uh, directly attributable to, this, to the city. For example, the city is going to pay utilities. and so. We think it made sense for the city to pay those utilities directly rather than have it flow through LCI. Um, but for the most part, uh, the expenses will be borne initially by LCI with reimbursements back to LCI from the city. And revenues collected are going to be set aside in an independent account, and that's covered in paragraph 8C, where it talks about, uh, as directed by the city, uh, revenue will be, any revenue generated will go into a separate account that no funds will be commingled, those funds will be held in trust for the city. Um, and there'll be accounting every month about uh, what those, what, what's happening with that revenue. Yes, sure. Please. Uh, in, now, does the city, in consultation with the finance department and, you know, understanding the previous operators, financials, have kind of, uh, you know, I tried to demise from the agreement. We're paying them $160,000 for the year. Um, and then, you know, we're covering expenses, but presumably, all the revenue they take in are going to offset their own expenses. So do we have kind of like a, an understanding of what beyond the $160,000 that the city is going to be paying as an operator, paying to the operator for them to operate the agreement or operate the facility, kind of what the further expense outlay looks for the city on a yearly basis? I, I think to answer your question, Councilman, um, there are projections. Um, I think a, a lot of the uh, the, the issues with the prior um, arrangement was that there were some expenses that were just a mystery to, to, to us. So I think there's some projections and some budgeting and forecasting that we've done um, and that LCI will do and present to the city in advance um, that we basically it's going to be our, our best projection going forward and will be reviewed on a month to month basis. And what, what, what is council's ability to review those or be updated about it? Like what, how does the administration envision that process? Well, the administration will be reviewing the budget or, you know, mem a member of the uh, city representative uh, from the administration will be reviewing the budget with LCI um, uh, going forward. And then how would this be, you know, I understand it would likely be broken up into operating and then capital, right? So capital is the building and any other big equipment. Um, but how, how, because I, we're, you know, 
uh, us here on council are going to get questions about this and explain to uh, you know us you know what the city's likely going to spend on this in year one and kind of what the revenues are going to be so if there's a way in which and i interested in the rest of my colleagues about a special meeting next week to further consider this if there's a way to at least give us our best guess so that we can at least be informed and explain to our constituents you know kind of what we expect um to happen even even understanding that it could be wrong because it's the first year uh, that would be extremely uh, yes, to answer your question, Councilman, uh, the objective here is to get a, a projection, a projected budget for the year starting July 1. And uh, again, from there, it'll be reviewed monthly to make sure that uh, budget's on target or, or to understand why uh, variances are occurring and where they are occurring. And so that uh, obviously, you know, Council will need the, the budget accordingly. Yeah, we'll, we'll come back. Thank you, Mr. Um, Baker, and thank you, administration. Again, I echo my colleagues' thanks for pulling this together in short order. We know that this is on a, a deadline and a timetable, and we, we'll stick to that timetable of making sure we get this done by, um, by the end of the month for sure. Um, so this 160000 I think one of the, kind of going back to my colleague's line of questioning, I, I've, I can already, in fact, I've already received a couple of questions about, you know, what's in this agreement and how it compares to the last agreement. Um, you know, I would I love saying visuals. I think the uh, planning department has done a wonderful job in the past of giving us sort of like, here's what we, here's the last agreement, here's this agreement, here's the difference. Um, and, and if it's more, that's fine. What are we getting for that extra? Maybe even a, another kind of um, description of what this model, um, you know, I, I've read the agreement, but it, it would help maybe hearing a little bit more about um, this fee uh, for service type model. Um, and then at the end, I would like to also hear from um, our guests. I'd love to hear particularly about their experience. And, and I think one thing that I've heard the couple of years I've been on council is the scheduling. Not so much the fees, not so much um, the hockey practice, but be, there being open skate and there being conflicts and the ice being not available for different groups at different times. I mean, that has been um, a constant drumbeat. And that's why I'm really excited about this conversation and the fact that we'll have a new partner that I, that I, I am sure uh, will be much more attentive to the community's needs, but would um, like to know a little bit more about experience, how we handle that, uh, process of, of figuring all that out moving forward. So it's a lot, but I'll let you dig into it. Thank you, Mr. Crossman. <laughs> I'll try to answer your question, Councilman. Um, well, the, the fee for services, I think, speaks for itself. So it's a fee for services. The difference here is it's a significant difference in departure from the prior arrangement. In the prior arrangement, we essentially allowed a for profit entity to come in and lease the facility for its own purpose. And so the community took a back seat in a lot of ways, I think. In this arrangement, the priority is to make sure that the community is well served. So the, the fee for services is really about performing services to, to meet the, the city's expectation that the facility be operated for the benefit of the community. So we think that while the city is paying a fee rather than receiving a lease payment, we think that that's an investment uh, for the benefit of the community. Do we have a sense of the net difference, even even generally, the net difference in cost in this model? And I agree, I like this model better. I mentioned that in the last uh, meeting um, that we had on this. And I want to also thank, again, the planning commission, our planning director, for, for getting this, getting ahead of this and getting this out and having a pre-introduction to kind of warm us up to this idea. There being this short sort of time window was helpful, having that discussion in advance. Um, so you get what I'm trying to get at. Like, I'm just trying to understand um, because I can, I can anticipate being asked. I know there's members of the community that'll want to know um, how much more the city is, is paying and exactly for what. I'm beginning to understand the for what. Um, and, I, you know, and it is potentially worth a lot more. And I'm talking about net, net benefit to the city, not so much you know, with the models. I think that's kind of what my colleague was getting at too, if there's any kind of information that could be provided. And I see we have a member coming up to the mic here, but yeah, Mr. I'll, I'll let Mr. Oh, you're leaving. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> uh, I'm old. I gotta go potty. That's all right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Crossman. Yeah. So the the benefit, and just in in non-financial terms, the net benefit is uh, more control over the schedule, uh, more control over open skating and other opportunities for community the community members to use the facility uh, for the benefit of the community. Rather can, I, than, can I pause you right there? Because sure. this is good. This is an important thing. How, how does that process look under this model? Like what happens when 
uh, something's not working. Let's say there's skate and it's not scheduled right or whatever. How do we respond to constituents emailing the mayor, emailing council, trying to get this arranged? We, we didn't have much control under the old agreement, right? Sure, I, I understand your question now, thank you. Uh, so there's gonna be monthly meetings with, with okay. uh, the operator and between the operator and the city uh, to make sure that everything's sm flowing smoothly. Uh, LCI is going to be proposing schedules. The city will have the right to object to that schedule if it's not meeting the city's needs. But we hope and uh, we believe that uh, the LCI is going to be working essentially in partnership with the city to make sure that the city's needs are being met. Okay. Um, Mr. Baker, do you have some follow-up questions and then maybe we can get to um, community ice here in a minute. I uh, would love to hear from you guys. Y yes, and uh, a suggestion on the property taxes. I, I think if you indicate that the city would be responsible if there are property taxes, I think that actually cuts in favor of it being exempt. Um, but you guys, my case law might be old there. Um, on, on, on just the financials of it, because I, um, I really want to understand this because, you know, ultimately it's not council's job to get in the weeds and operate this. That's the administration's job to work with the operator, but we're responsible for the financial aspect of it. Um, so is the intent that is the hope, or you know, I guess let's parse this out. Are we hoping that the revenues cover the expenses for the operator, um, our, you know, uh, our partner, or are we expecting that they won't? It's the expectations that the, the facility will be self-sustaining, meaning that the revenues will be generated sufficient to cover the expenses and cover the uh, fee for the services. And is that in line with what the projections you have at this point are? That, that's my understanding, yes. Yes. Okay, so, so essentially then the city would just, from a practical standpoint, on an ongoing basis, the city would be responsible for the $160,000 payment a year and capital of the facility. Ideally, Councilman, the, the revenue generated would, would also at least uh, in part meet some of the capital expenditure needs going forward. Um, that's another benefit to this arrangement is that, uh, you know, you have uh, two partners working together to identify the needs of the facility to make sure that those capital needs are being addressed uh, on a going forward basis rather than having a private operator in there that's not addressing the capital needs and is really only focused on the short term. Yeah, and so, so from that, that's a great point, and this is more so on the city's administration side. If there is extra revenues, is that going into a capital fund for Winterhurst, or is that going into the general fund? That was not covered in this agreement. That's something for the administration and council to, to work out, I think. Yeah, because I, f f from, I mean, needs, I, needs, capital need identification is not easy, but it's the easy part of the two-part question, which is then capital fund allocation <laughs> to fix, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, interested in how the administration sees that playing out, because I know the facility has a roof issue. Ha I mean, it's an old facility. It needs investment. Director Leininger, uh, there's, there's an enterprise fund that's established already for Winterhurst, and so all the funds flow in and out of that enterprise fund, and that'll be the same case uh, with, this, with this current arrangement. Everything stays within everything. Every money, every dollar that is generated for rev, for revenue uh, for Winterhurst stays in for expenditure at Winterhurst. And the fees come out of that enterprise fund. As everything well? comes out. Ex okay. Fees and revenue and expenditures come out of that enterprise fund. And so the idea is for that fund to sort of break even every year, um, and that's what we're hoping for. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Bass, boss. Yeah, I think that that's the intent, uh, yeah. Councilman. Yeah. Uh, just as it was managed prior to, to 2008. Um, that Winterprise, the Winterhurst Enterprise Fund was established for the management of, of that specific facility. And so that uh, revenues flow in, costs and expenditures flow out, and that's how, I think that's, that's the primary vehicle for finance to keep track of everything associated with the management and the operation of this facility. So before 2008, was there, were we, was there a break-even scenario back then, or do we, it might be a little before, before it was operated, before 2008, the facility was operated by the city. Um, whether or not the fund was an enterprise fund or not, I, I, d I don't know that level of detail. Okay. Uh, but it's like a department of the city, essentially. It was essentially a department or a division of public works. Got it. So, yeah, there wouldn't be a real uh, performa or business sort of document that would show beyond that. Well, we can look back to previous budgets and see for whatever was allocated within those budgets for expenditure and revenue side uh, to see what came in out of that. Um, it, it, for a little bit of a look back we had, it was, it was, it was 
ca at best cash neutral, but generally always cash positive. Yeah. Um, and that's that's the, that in continues to be the goal with any any facility that the city operates is to at least be cash neutral. Great. Uh, but if we can be cash positive, that's 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 the goal. Well, I don't I don't want to be clear as a member of one of seven. Like I, it, it's, you know, it's not so much. This is worth investing in. I think it's worth putting some money aside. It's just, it's just knowing that's all, because we're gonna we're the ones voting on this. We're the ones that are ultimately responsible for those purse strings. Uh, I want to know exactly, and it, that, Mr. Mr. Mass, Mr. Um, Leininger, that, that's very helpful. Uh, that really answered one of my main questions tonight, so I really appreciate that. Um, any other uh, questions on this before we get to LC LCS, Liquid Community? LCI. Oh, excuse me, ICE, right. Uh, LCI. Or ICE. ICE. I li oh, I like it, yeah. All right, well, um, I don't know who uh, would like to speak, but would love to hear, and um, I'm sure maybe my members have, our members here have some questions, but I'll uh, just introduce yourself, and if you want to give a quick overview, a little bit of history about the... Um, I, I will, um, Councilman, if I could, yeah. Mr. Chair, I'll just give a quick introduction before I... That'd be great. ...hand Thank it you. off. And, I, and really, to kind of go back to, uh, as I was thinking through, I think... I hope I'm, I'm paraphrasing this and one of the questions that you were kind of hinting at is kind of what, you know, what's the value for this change? What are we getting out of this? And I think there's a couple things that I just touch on very quickly. So the, the model that we're shifting to, this, this is a, the model we're shifting to is a municipally operated facility. The relationship, the goal for that relationship, it, it is transparent, it's collaborative, and it's, it's closely coordinated, and this is something that we haven't had for the last 15 years plus. Um, and then the focus on programming is, is really on that base of the pyramid, is what I call it. It's back to uh, in our discussions surround the American Development Model, which is a recognized kind of programmatic approach um, where you funnel children in it at an early age, basic skill development that then can be funneled off into a variety of ice sports, whether it be speed skating, hockey, figure skating. But it's a, it is a very conscious, collaborative, and transparent approach to programming. And I think that's, that's, that's the first kind of objective and the goal that we're really getting out of this. And I, I outlined some goals in the RFQ and the RFP. Uh, we have been consistent and uh, in, in, in throughout the process and driving home those goals. And so just to touch on, I think, you know, for that fee, the operating fee that, that we've worked out, what you're getting from that operating fee is the expertise that's sitting over here. And it's, and I'll just highlight, and as they'll come up, you're getting um, very high uh, business acumen from Mr. McCarthy, a very high marketing acumen from Kevin McCarthy, programming expertise, and Russ Sinkowicz, a former professional hockey player, and then uh, one of the probably one of the better rink, rink operators and managers in the area, and uh, Mr. McNeil, who operates the Gilmore Arena. If you're familiar with Gilmore on the east side, yeah. um, and so for that operating fee, you know we're, we're really getting kind of the best in this area, and arguably probably outside of this area, um, in all in all of those areas, which is one of the areas. I mean, this is this is why this team really stood kind of head and shoulders above the other uh, proposals that we considered. Um, and then that incentive piece, just to touch on that, the, the advertising and the sponsorship is huge for a facility like this. And to kind of place that as an incentive, you know, squarely on that team, um, that really, it, it, it sticks towards one of our objectives and kind of statements that we had both throughout the RFQ and the RFP was to, to really get Winterhurst back to its preeminence in terms of a regional facility. And I think that that speaks volumes towards the incentive that's placed on their lap towards making this a success. Um, and, I, and I would just say outside, and they can speak to this as well. I mean, it, it, they're very well known, very well kind of uh, established in terms of uh, the, the community and the, the organizations that operate out of Winterhurst. And so they're, they're, I think every one of these uh, gentlemen have an awful lot of skin in the game, if you will, in terms of this succeeding. Um, and so towards that collaborative, that transparent and coordinated approach. I think uh, um, we got a lot of work ahead of us, but um, I think we have a great team moving forward. And so I'll, um, I can hand it over to uh, Tim and then he can introduce his team and speak a little further. Tim. Thank Welcome. you, Councilman. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, I'm gonna try to think of how to keep this short. <laughs> Uh, we put together a fund. Actually, I'll just tell you the truth. 
Um, I, among the things I've done since I pulled, sold my first business in 2007 is uh, focus on uh, training entrepreneurs um, and actually funding them um, a, as a lender that can't get money from banks. Um, and so one of my uh, gigs uh, has always been the Goldman Sachs 10,000 small businesses um, class, which I do annually. And this tall kid with the wavy hair, three years ago when I pitched that event, um, chased me out to my car. And uh, we've been meeting frequently ever since because I really believe in the guy. And then uh, Kevin, we didn't have the right marketing mix. And we've been doing some development ideas with, uh, uh, for, for mainly programming, but also other, other things. Uh, and so that's what you have. I think the biggest difference with what you're getting, and I think the thing that attracted uh, your planning group and actually your whole team, uh, Mr. Story included, I remember he was in the room, is that the biggest difference you'll see, and you'll see it right away, is we presented transparency. We have no there's just no reason, none of the businesses I've owned and operated have ever had any reason to not be transparent. And so that's how we'll set this up, um, is just everybody sees everything as it happens. Um, we gained a lot of faith and a lot of fondness in Sean and, and uh, David in the process. Um, and we just think we'll be a dynamic team, very easy to and, and I guess that's the last thing I'll say. Um, be gentle uh, for at least a year. Uh, this is not going to go smoothly. Uh, this arena has been operated in a dramatically different manner uh, than your planning group is committed to. Uh, you're, if, if we can get it up on the screen, screen when Russ talks about programming, it would be great for you guys to see the development we call it the Winterhurst Development Model. It's uh, based on an American development model, which is a way for kids to go from just learning to skate with their mom or their dad uh, all the way through to as far as they want to go, including playing club hockey like, uh, like Russ does. Uh, but it'll require patience from everybody because you'll see whatever things are going right and wrong, because uh, that's the transparency. But I don't think you turn around uh, something that's been headed in one direction for 15 years in just a few moments. So. One quick and thank you for that. I appreciate your candor. Um, what do you see as being a major sort of chain hurdle in, in, in changing the course of the of the changing the, the course here? What, what's what, what's one thing one, one thing you're going to be tackling first and is maybe keeping you up at night or that you're okay. anxious to get working on? I should say. No, you guys are asking good questions. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> the, one, the one thing that keeps me up at night that's an overall that'll take forever to change is the perception. The, the arena cur currently has just a, an inappropriate perception. Um, and to say it simply is it's not been city first. And that's what these cats told us from the first day of inviting us to the RFQ, is just, and, and that's, that's the Titanic turning, because you don't convince people that you've changed until you honestly show them you've changed, you know? And it'll be those times when that schedule comes, and Mike's already freaked out about it. That's what keeps him up at night, is how you take away a high-paying block of time in the schedule, and make sure it's available instead to the public for a public skate or a senior skate or a, that kind of thing. Those aren't going to be easy. Those aren't going to be easy moves. If uh, you decide to have Mike talk because he doesn't like talking, he's an operator. Um, he'll tell you that that freaks him out. So, very good. I'll tell you that. And then, oh, the other is um, max efficiency. Um, the rink business, at least in North Ohio, Northeast Ohio, and I don't think there's many exceptions, um, has a history of self-dealing and, um, you know, slick dealing. And so even on the 
Uh, food service vendor in the hockey shop, skate sharpener, we recommended the city right out of the box, don't take any rent, but also don't find somebody that'll do all the work. So you won't get caught in the staffing problems, the, you know, all the other stuff that comes from operating a non-ICE business. Uh, and we have people that we've already approached to bring to you uh, to, to make sure that that doesn't, it, it just is a nice even, not a positive, not a negative. Perfect. Uh, I can give you every arena in the city and I'll tell you which one it's in favor of because <laughs> it's always leaning very heavily one way or the other. Either, either the civic arena gets killed, you know, or the um, vendor gets killed and then doesn't stay around. So in all those things, we're just looking for transparency, having things open, um, uh, and that's it. I appreciate that. Did I answer your question? You did very well. I believe. Hold on. Uh, do you uh -oh. have any, any any comments? Any questions? <laughs> any other questions? Yes, Cindy, Miss Marks. Thank you. Um, I'm excited to see this change, and and uh, maybe you'll have skating lessons for seniors, and I'll sign up. Um, you, you and me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Councilman. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm I'm a game. Any, anything. So, um, <laughs> I haven't skated in like 30 years, but I would like to try. That's a um, nice me idea. Me too. Me too. Um, what do you see as your biggest challenge? And, and I understand perception probably is a challenge, and um, and that's not going to change until it changes. But what what other challenge do you see as your greatest the, challenge? The, the, Mr. Crossman was not um, uh, being coy when he said it's a financial challenge. And the financial challenge is almost entirely based in the detail. Councilman Marks, um, <laughs> that's my sister's married name. Oh. Um, Francis Marks was, um, anyway, sorry, rabbit holes. <laughs> Ernie keeps me from these. Um, but in the financial detail is the potential for a nightmare. And so what we've been talking about, especially Mr. Boz and I, um, the last week in these daily meetings we're already having, um, is that we can't do anything fast. Because if we do it fast, we might make uh, a financial error that's hard to overcome. Mm -hmm. And so support Mr. Crossman saying, we think we can have the revenue above the expense line. And there's a lot of, uh, to, to the other uh, questions was, there's a lot of detail we already have behind that, but it's speculative. That's, that's the biggest problem is those details just get ugly and deep. Uh, the city, uh, 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 I think it must have been the administration and the law office did a brilliant uh, deal with the departing operator to be able to hold on to as much of the equipment and everything that's there uh, as possible. So that should help a lot, but it's still gonna be, it's scary thinking all the stuff that, um, the, the devil is in the details for sure. And, and just a sidebar, um, I'm very interested in that Goldman Sachs program. I've referred a lot of people to it, and some of my friends have taken it, and they said how wonderful it was. Oh, it's remarkable. So I, I've shared that with a lot of people here in Lakewood, Lakewood Alive, and a lot of other small businesses, because I think they all could benefit from it. And what a great program for free. I wish I was 20 years younger. I'd be signing up myself. Oh, yeah. It's a fabulous program. We, Our little town that God forgot out in Ashtabula, um, where I live and grew up, um, stole their retirement. When they're retiring, Larry Polina, who directed the program, retired. We've got them to spend part time with us out in Ashtabula. So yeah, they're great people. Anything else? You want Thank to you. I appreciate this is it. The, there's, this yeah. is the big dog that's coming up now. Yeah, if they, He's the one that we follow after. We have a few minutes. We'd love to hear from anyone else you uh, and just state your name for the record and, yeah. and your, your role in this. Although we were given great introductions, they've all yeah, escaped of course. me. Uh, Russ Linkwich, I'm kind of more of a missions officer. I'm really kind of the programming expert on our team. And I, I think one challenge that certainly we're looking at is a really fragmented, a really broken schedule that we're kind of acquiring uh, that's been mismanaged, kind of, again, mm -hmm. kind of in the model it was, where it was a, a for-profit, kind of a self-serving entity. So that's something that, as we're kind of unpacking, is directly implementing a number of sitting programming from a learn to skate and learn to play um, the, um, the parent and Todd hockeys, the open skates, again, simple things on the development model that don't exist in your building, which are, I mean, truthfully, they're almost rights in a hockey rink 
that don't exist. And that's something that there's a lot of quick wins that we're able to implement this summer and in the fall that really aren't going to, you know, detract too many of the current groups. And there's a number of heavier lifts that, you know, Mike and I were going to have to go through the schedule and rearrange things like a Friday night open skate. You know, my childhood, I would go to that rink and there would quite literally be north of five, 600 kids on that rink. And that's where kids learn to play hockey. You haven't had an open skate in 10 years. Like, it's insane. And it's, it's such a gem and it's so mismanaged. And that's something that for us is we're so excited to do and so excited to bring back. And, you know, those are things that are they're hard to quantify from a straight ROI in dollars and cents. But what that does from an economic impact, people coming in, you know, whether parents going and, you know, going out and dropping off their kids or just, you know, getting them involved in the sport and then becoming a skater or a hockey player or a speed skater. And then it's really just growth through that facility that, um, it's, it's a really incredible thing, and it, you, don't, you don't have it right now. And that's something that we're really excited to bring back, and it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, one additional challenge is the building really hasn't been managed well, and you just go in, and it just it doesn't have the feel that it should. It, it's not clean. It's not presentable. And again, there's a number of really great quick wins that we're able to do this summer from an aesthetic standpoint uh, and cleanliness standpoint that's more welcoming. That's, um, it really just it's, it's a forward-facing or, I guess, a public-facing image that the building deserves that it doesn't have. And those are some really easy lifts that we're able to do immediately. And then uh, one member of our team that wasn't mentioned, he's not here, but uh, Don Rogers out of Rogers Incorporated. And he's, I mean, he's quite literally one of the best in the country at, at facility management, uh, facility development, construction. Uh, his team built Nationwide Arena where the Blue Jackets play in every single rink in Central Ohio, his team built. And he's a part of our team. And he walked the facility with us last Wednesday, Mike and Chris and I. And, and David and just going through a number of things that they're able to do to fix the heaving and to fix the roof and to do locker rooms and you don't have a girls locker room you're one of the only facilities in the state that doesn't have a girls locker room you know which is it's extremely problematic and that's something that we can change um, and we will change you know and that's something that's again our team is able to kind of be the shepherd to those changes with the city going into next year with a, a major shutdown and some major capital improvements and and all of that. So on the programming end, there's a number of things that we're going to be implementing immediately, um, definitely towards the late summer, early fall. And it goes in phases, because in, in order to get every single thing you want, you're going to disrupt a lot of schedules, um, which over time we could phase that in. And realistically, you start talking to the spring or summer of 24, um, this building is going to be solely a community-focused building that supports a number of private entities like a St. Ed's or a Team Ohio or whomever as well as you know, Lakewood High School, figure skating, public skating, and everything like that. Thank you. Of course. Well, I really appreciate the acknowledgement of how uh, this improvement will take a lot of time and effort. It seems you're really willing to uh, jump on it. And again, I just want to echo my appreciation for stepping up to the plate. Um, mixed sports metaphor, but that's OK. Yeah, of course. Um, getting out there on the ice, I yeah, guess. Yeah. I don't know. Get, getting your sticks on the ice, is right. that what it is? Um, but I really appreciate, again, the, the fact that you seem to be putting community first. It's a different sort of take than we've had uh, with that for-profit model that we're happy to be moving away from. So one quick question, being sort of a, you know, we talked a lot about Lakewood's needs, the community of Lakewood. Uh, are there any local connections here to, 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 the, to the area? You guys from Northeast Ohio, Ohio? Yeah. Just curious. Yeah, I live eight houses up the street. <laughs> I, live on, I live on Alameda, right at the turn. All right, all um, right. Yeah, no, I, I, I grew up, I mean, I was in that rink when you would break your ribs on the boards because you didn't have glass. So uh, when you used to have a turnstile that came off the boulevard, like a ticket counter. So That's I've fun. quite literally probably put more hours in that rink than any person in this building. So um, for me, it's, it's kind of, it truly is, I said it to my wife, it's, it's like a legacy project. It's something that I want to be able to tell my kids that our team brought it back. So it's a, it's a huge... You know, our reputation's on the line. It's something that I care very, very much about. Our team cares very much about. So, what about your tenant relationship? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Good question. And yeah, and our, and our tenant. I mean, I'm you know an alum of St. Ed's, but our relationships with St. Ed's, with Winterhurst, with the skaters, with the speed skaters, the men's league groups. Um, you know, Mike and I have direct relationships with all those program heads. As an organization, we work with a number of them. Uh, we have an organization called the Ohio Hockey Project, which is truly it is the definition of com community involvement and. It's, we don't do teams, we don't do tournaments, we do nothing that conflicts with any of this. It's development of kids in the sport, and that's something that you know, we're extremely invested in, in, in bringing these opportunities to, to kids getting on the ice. So. You know, it might not have been a prerequisite that you have these connections, but I can see it being a, just a, a tremendous benefit to, to Lakewood. So I want to, again, thank you. Um, we're getting pretty close to time here. I want to turn it back to my colleagues one last time. You can have a seat, please. 
Um, if there are any final questions or thoughts, um, no from Mr. Mark. Yes, Mr. Baker. Yeah, uh, and, and thank you, uh, Russ and uh, Tim and everyone else. I'd, I'd like to understand from a perspective of like um, percentage of your time. You know, uh, I assume that you may be in other ranks or have other facilities or have other jobs. I'd like to understand from each of you kind of what, how you spec it. Is it 25% of this person, 10% of that person? Could you go through that? Be helpful. You're doing too many good questions. Um, I'm serious. Um, the uh, development of each uh, of the uh, businesses that made it, um, among the many I've worked with, uh, is entirely how you develop the operating team. And so the truth is the way, I mean, I'll eventually answer your question. But first, I want you to know that um, Russ knows every person that already works there and every person that runs a program there. And so, uh, especially the people that are already there are gonna, we're gonna give every attempt to have them continue and grow their careers uh, right inside of Winterhurst. Having said that, um, I'll give you a guess. Um, uh, Ross is already there <laughs> during the summer, is at Winterhurst 40% of his time um, in the off season, uh, working specifically on LCI, I'm sure 20, 25% because uh, he has 2,000 kids enrolled in the development programs. Uh, Kevin's going to be, <laughs> Kevin's our day to day inside the arena. Um, and then Kevin's going to get super busy when it's time to try to bring the city money uh, with regard to sponsorships, advertising, other things that he's done in his career. That's been his whole career is marketing and advertising. Um, we actually have a schedule for uh, young Mr. McNeil and particularly a schedule over the first um, three months, which we think are the perilous time. That's our scariest time. Um, and he's, we've got him down for about 25 hours a week. Um, and then I'll be, I'm, I'm hopefully pretending to be retired. Uh, so my dream is to be maybe 10% of the time. Every one of those is a crapshoot, just like the numbers would be, but you deserve a, as honest an answer as I can give you. The more important thing, I'm sorry, the additional thing to staff development, which is what we want to do with the people already there, and then of course the people we're going to have to recruit for those who wish to leave, um, is uh, meeting, frequency, and discipline. And so the thing I can tell you without any doubt, just like when we all got scared what's gonna happen in these first three weeks, we literally have a daily Zoom call at 11 a.m. All of us get on the horn and make sure we think about what's to freak out about. Uh, and there's been plenty so far. <laughs> um, but then the, the part that uh, you can uh, count on 100% of all four of us is going to be in that meeting rhythm. So in other words, uh, the staff at Winterhurst will meet with us weekly. Uh, we will meet with, um, uh, we think it's going to be Mr. Boz, but we'll figure it out over time. Uh, we'll meet, be meeting with him weekly. Uh, we'll then have a monthly with the whole team, and we'll all be parts of those things. Uh, Thank you, and uh, you know, I, I, it's interesting that the Lakewood coach is Andy Sankovich, but your, yours is spelled a little different. No relation. Okay, um, but I'm glad, you know, as a, as a Lakewood grad, I, it's hard for me to give credit to Ed's grads in a public <laughs> setting, um, <laughs> but you seem like a nice guy, so. Um, uh, th is Coach Sankovich a nice guy? You, you, yeah, he's, 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 um, he was just inducted into the Lakewood uh, Athletic Hall of Fame, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, he played at Fredonia, I think. Um, he a little, a little past his playing days, I think, but he could probably still get out there and uh, yeah. play. Question for the city: uh, Serpentini Arena name, is that continue beyond this operator? Is that an agreement with the city? How many years is left on it? Explain that to me, um, Councilman. My understanding is that that relationship ends with the current operator, uh, and so um, that will be part of the upcoming opportunity to um, generate some revenue uh, with respect to advertising and sponsorships and such. So that, that, that would essentially be the 75-25 the split that's referenced? In Correct. The okay. 
Forgive me, what is the length of this contract? I think I'd asked in the last meeting we were still up in the air, but what, what's the length of this contract? It's uh, designed as a five-year agreement with a one-year extension opportunity, uh, okay. provided both parties agree. And what, um, after a year, are there any performer reviews, performance sort of metric tests built in? The, the reviews uh, we anticipate are going to be ongoing on a okay. monthly basis. Some, some, some questions. All right, any, any other comments from uh, members of, of council or members of the, yeah, Mr. Kyle, Gordon, I think you would, Kyle, I think you'd be happy to know that Andy Sankovich is the newest member of the City of Lakewood Public Works Department. Oh. Uh, yeah, I actually heard that this weekend. So, uh, watch out for him. No, he's a good guy. Well, at this point, we're running up on time. I'm, I mean, you've answered my questions. I feel very comfortable with this. Uh, part of what I believe, and we can figure out sort of what the next step is here, but I believe that um, you know, we're authorizing the mayor to enter into agreement. I feel the lawyers have done a good job, not being one myself, at, at pulling this together in short order. Um, I, but Mr. Baker, if there's other thoughts or anything else you'd want to ask or anything else you want to propose? Yeah, and I'm interested in what my colleagues' thoughts are on the floor tonight. I guess, um, you know, I think uh, Council President Litton was a part of the group that helped review these. I'm interested in, in his perspective. He's a, a hockey parent um, and has been and has been at the rink a lot. So I still, uh, if scheduling is okay with my colleagues, I, I would like to understand the financials better. Um, you know, we got this agreement at 12:30, and I appreciate the fact that the law department has been working very hard with the operator to come to this mostly formed agreement. Um, but I'm interested in what my colleagues have to say on the floor tonight. Yeah. So what I would suggest is, ref if it's amenable, referring this. And there's only two of us, so we, we could be hung <laughs> and keep it in committee. Uh, uh, we could refer to the floor. We have to refer I think we should refer it to the floor. Uh, I would be, I mean, I'm amenable to referring it with a, a recommendation to adopt, but if you'd rather, we could just refer it back for more discussion tonight. And, um, you know, I, again, will just note the conversation tonight in the uh, report and, and, and open it up to the full council for more discussion. Yeah, I think just referring it to the full floor would be best. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and move, uh, move that this could be referred back to the main, uh, the, the, the full council meeting tonight and um, remains on that agenda for tonight, and then we'll decide whether there's maybe a need for more discussion or another meeting at a, at a later date, so. Uh, second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any uh, other thoughts, com comments, administration, anybody else on this plan? Very good, and hearing none, all in favor, aye. aye. Uh, and against, none, the ayes have it. And that brings us to the end of the meeting, so thank you everyone for coming and hanging out with us, and stick around for the 7.30 show if you really want. <laughs> I'm eating a drink.